All right, welcome to part three of the AOE effects tutorial. Um, like I said at the end of the last one, in this one, we're not actually going to be writing any, uh, we're not going to be changing this function at all. It's already finished. I'm just going to be showing you some more practical examples of how you might use it so that you can kind of get a better, better idea of, um, you know, what you might use it for and how you would change it to work with other things. So we're going to be creating two little simple blueprints here. We're going to create one that's a trip mine. And when you step on it, it's going to do AOE damage to everything around you. And then we're going to create another one that does a poison effect and it's just always active no matter what and then oh actually there's three and then we're going to create another one that's a heal effect that heals everybody around you when you press it including yourself so let's do the heal one first because that's pretty straightforward so if we come back to the event graph of the oops of the third person character so here is i'm just going to add a comment around this by pressing c this is going to be our attack maybe i should say AOE attack, AOE attack, and when we press E, and let's say Q is going to heal us, so we'll say input Q, use the little Q key, and we're going to copy pretty much all of this, so let's just copy all of this, except for the E key, of course, and paste, compile, and save, and inside of here, we're going to change this so that it heals us instead of damages us. Um, oh, and I forgot to, we want to make sure we have require LOS checked for the damage one, because we want, we want that to be the case. But for the heal one, we want it to be unselected, or, or untrue, or false. We don't care about line of sight for healing. We also want it to heal ourselves, so we're going to remove our AOE instigator. We'll change the debug color to green, just so we can tell the difference. And instead of damage, we're going to call heal. We'll say heal. So now, just like that, in a matter of, like, less than a minute, I've created a little heal thing. So if we go ahead and run it, and I'm just going to come here and deal, deal some damage to this guy. And then when I press Q, oh, that didn't actually work. Um, oh, I left I left zero for the amount. <laughs> That's why. We'll set uh, heal 100. So now if I come back and I damage this guy, and then I press Q, you can see he gets healed. And if I had more than one character in here, just alt drag this guy to create two of them. Oh, guess I'm playing as this guy now. I damage this guy. You can see when I press this, it's hitting the right guy, but it's not hitting the left guy because that wall's in the way. Um, let me go damage this guy as well. So now if I heal, you can see it heals both of them. So that's a super simple way to add healing for an AoE effect. So just say, uh, add a little comment here, AoE heal. So now let's get to something a little bit more complex, but still super easy to use with this method. Um, we'll do a little poison effect. So if we come back here, we'll add a blueprint class, and we'll call it, or we'll make it of type actor. We'll call it uh, BP poison area, something like that. And maybe we'll add a little static mesh just so we can kind of see where it is. So we'll add a static mesh. And we'll set it to just some cube, something like this, just so we know where it is, where it's coming from. Now, all we need to do if we want this little cube to be the center of a little poisonous gas effect that just gets applied to the player or anybody um, every frame whenever they're close enough to it, we we'll go to the event graph. And then inside the event tick, we'll say, actually, we're going to just go back and copy this code. We're going to copy this and this this, this, and this. Copy all of this. And back in the poison area, we'll just paste. Put this up. Alright, so now we want this to apply damage over time. So this is happening every tick. Um, so one thing we want to do is we want to change the draw debug duration down to like 0 0.1, so it's not... because these circles don't need to hang around very long because they're being drawn every frame. And we also don't care about LOS because it's like a poisonous gas effect, so we don't really care if it has line of sight. Um, the instigator, we can give it ourselves just so we don't damage ourselves, even though this thing doesn't take damage, doesn't hurt. So like get ref to self, uh, like so. Well, yeah, well, one good reason to use self here, even though we can't damage ourselves, is that um, we want self here because otherwise the line traces are going to hit ourself. But if you have the self here, then it's going to ignore, so it won't actually hit itself, which is a good thing. All right, and then 
the custom event here, we just want to apply damage. So we'll say off hit actor, we'll say damage. And we want to apply damage based on delta time, so that way it doesn't change based on your frame rate. So we'll say get delta seconds, and we'll say float times, I don't know, like 50 or something, just so it's a little higher, high enough to see. And let's change this to like a yellow, like gas looking color, something like that. I don't know. So now if we compile this, and I'm going to drag one of these guys into the world over here. Something like that. If we run this, and we look over here, you can see it has this little poisonous gas, and we go inside of it, and you see we start taking damage. And if we were to drag one of those guys in here, he would start taking damage as well. And again, just like that, we've created a really simple AoE poisonous gas effect. Um, we can still heal if we want to. That was the damage one. We can still heal as we're inside. And so on. Uh, and then finally, we'll do one more, just as another little example. We'll create a little trip mine. So we'll do right click. Blueprint class. I want to use actor again. Call it bp underscore trip mine. And inside of here, again, let's add a static mesh. And we'll just use the cube again. I'm a big fan of the cube. And we'll change the scale to like 0 0.1 or maybe 0 0.01. There we go. So it's like nice and flat. And maybe we can find a red material in here if we're lucky. Uh, maybe this one. Yep, that seemed to work. Just so it's like a red color. And then we want to add some collision to this. So click on the default scene root. And we're going to say add. Or what are we going to say? Click on this and we'll say add. What is it called? Collision? Box? I can't type. Box collision. That's what it's called. Box collision. We want to add a box collision. And we can just kind of scale this down and put it above the box, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we can right click on this box and say add event and say add component begin overlap. So this event's gonna get called whenever that box is overlapped with. And inside of here, we just wanna do the exact same thing we've done everywhere else. And then we can just modify it to, you know, kind of do what we want it to do. So I'll just write it from scratch this time. We'll say get game state and we wanna cast to our third person game state. Um, oh, we should probably check, first of all, if the thing we overlapped with actually implements the damage interface. So we'll drag off of this. We'll say does implement interface. And we'll type in the health interface. And we'll just make a little branch node. Just so if something hits it that, like maybe a bullet hits it, or whatever, that doesn't take damage, we don't want it to go off. So make sure the thing that hits it actually implements the health interface so that it can take damage. And then we'll get our game state, cast it through a third person game state, and we'll call our little spawn AOE thing. And the location, again, is going to be the location of the trigger, so get actor location. The radius can be however big you want it to be, we'll just say like 500. Uh, require LOS probably for this one since it's a uh, explosion. The instigator is going to be ourself, so get ref to self like so, and then we'll drag off this. Add custom event, and again, this is going to get called whenever it detects that it hits something. The draw debug duration will just be 2.5, and the debug color will go with red again since it's an explosion. All right, so then we can write whatever we want to happen when this thing explodes. Um, so for each hit actor, we'll just say damage, and maybe it deals a lot of damage since it's a trip mine, we'll say like 500. And then also probably we want to delete it because it blew up, so we'll just say destroy actor. Make sure you hook that up up here and not down here, because again, this gets called for each person that it hits, so you don't want to destroy it per each person. You just want to destroy it once after it's finished. And we'll just destroy it. Okay, so now if we drag one of these into the world, and I'm actually going to do this slightly wrong so I can show you guys a potential bug. So if I just drag it into the world, um, this might not work. I'm going to copy this guy. So if I go and I walk over this, uh, that's not the guy I wanted to play as. Let me play as somebody else. 
you click on somebody and you set up the auto possess, you search for possess. Oh, they're all set to player zero, that's why. So this one to like player one. All right, so if I walk over here and I hit this, you can see it exploded and it tried to do the line trace, but the lines were green if you noticed, and that's because they already hit something. And they're, so they're actually hitting the ground and that's because um, this thing is technically like inside the ground. So all you need to do to fix that is just like literally drag it up like one unit and then it will work fine because it was just hitting the ground. So boom, you can see it explodes. I take damage, he takes damage, we all take damage. Um, but not those guys over there because they're not in range. So yeah, these are some pretty practical use cases. Um, super easy to do once you have this spawn AOE function implemented. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. If you have specific questions about how you would use this for something in your game, feel free to leave a comment or message me. The link to my Discord is also in the description of this video, so feel free to join that and ask questions as much as you want. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.